Hey guys, what is going on? It's Fen here again. So today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to create something like this. So what it is, is it's basically just some streaks of any object that you like really. And um, you could refer to them as swirls or ribbons or just um, <laughs> splines if you like. And um, I don't know, I just wanted to make a tutorial but I wasn't sure what to make and you know, a lot of people do like motion graphics, so this could be something ideal for motion graphics. You could have this following along, uh, maybe spelling out a name, something like that. And there's quite endless possibilities to this. And I'm just going to pause it here, um, because I just want to go over this um, scene here. I just want to go through the render settings, because um, in this tutorial, we're going to basically focus on creating this. We're not going to be creating this this final output, so the lighting and texture and stuff like that won't be covered in this tutorial, but if you do want the follow-up tutorial to light and basically render this out, then please let me know in the comments and I shall basically add that tutorial. But I just want to give you an overview of the render because this thing took forever to render out. And I think I know why, but I'll show you in just a second. So the, the overall render time from start to finish of this animation was 7 hours, 50 minutes and 8 seconds. So a very long time. Now luckily I was actually doing something through the day, so I just let this render um, pretty much through the day. So it wasn't really anything you know too bad but still seven hours is a very long time um, it's 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second it's three seconds long which means it's about 90 and um, the actual animation itself is 91 frames um, but yeah it's it's three seconds long the average frame was between three and four minutes and the longest frame was 12 minutes which was a frame like this where the reflections were at the max the shortest frame was 24 seconds, which was basically the blank screen. Um, and the pre-pass was 4 hours, 9 minutes and 50 seconds. So that being said, let's jump into cinema and I'll tell you why. So the reason this was actually uh, taking so long to render out was simply because um, of this, the RC plus QMC full animation. So this is a, a preset you choose from the GI mode and basically it just took way too long with full animation because what it does is it renders out all the pre-passes and there's 11 pre-passes. I'll give you an example in a second. Um, and then for the sampling it's on medium and the iridance cache is also on medium. It has global illumination of course and it has ambient occlusion. So um, let's have a look at the um, output. I just want to render this here. Um, yes. So if we look here in the top corner, we can see that it's update pass 1 of 11, frames 0 out of 91, and you've got the frame range and the seconds. So what it's going to do is it's going to render out the pre pass, which is 1 of 11, and it's going to do that 91 times. And you can see from when we go out, you don't really see anything. And the reason for that is because it's rendering pre-passes. And pre-passes are basically the GI and stuff like that, the lights. It's going to render all that out. And then it's going to render out the actual image. Now, is this the best option? Definitely not. Because this, like I said, took forever. Um, you might think it's going really fast now. But we're only on frame 6. And it's got to do this 11 times. So you can tell that it's going to take a very long time. Um, so that's one of the things that I will have to address in the next tutorial if you guys request it. Um, how to get the same look but of course render it faster. Um, it's, it's, it's somewhat of an issue sometimes. But that being said, let's get on with the tutorial because there's been enough talking. So I'm going to go to File New. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a... A spline essentially to allow the objects to move across now this spline is very important because it's what you're going to be animating effectively it's what's going to be the core of your animation so if we just grab the bezier and if we go into the uh, let's say top view this time and we can come in like this and we can do a nice curve bring this curve around like this 
and then we can just bring it off screen like so. So this is what we have and then what we can do is we can grab these points here and just maybe move them up slightly. Something like that and we can grab this and we can just move these points around a little bit. Grab the move tool and just maybe play with these points. And you know this is kind of the important part to get everything looking really nice and something like that. So what we need to do now is we need to create a proxy object. So I'm just going to create a sphere for this because it's a simple object. I'm going to put this down to about 10. Now this doesn't have to be anything fantastic simply because it's just a proxy. It's what we're going to be using to create our splines. So with the sphere selected, I'm going to hold Alt down and I'm going to go to More Graph and click on the cloner object. That's going to make the sphere a child of the cloner and as you can see here we have three cloners. So what we're going to do now is we're going to right click on the cloner object, go to Cinema 4D tags and put a line to spline and then in these options here where it says select spline you can click on this little uh, pickwick and click on the spline and it will grab it. Alternatively what you can do, as you can see it's actually chose the cloner here, is just grab the spline and drop it into here and that will get you the right um, the right item. But that being said, um, what we need to do now is animate this. So with the actual spline um, tag still selected, um, hold control and click on the position when you're at the frame zero. That's going to make a keyframe for this attribute. Then we're going to basically send this to 100%, which is at the end of this um, spline. We're going to go to 90, frame 90, and then use control and click on the position again. Now that's basically going to animate this for us. So if we hit play, it should work. And then I don't know why it isn't actually working. So let's put that there. And just double check that we did that correctly. Put this to 100. And control click. There we go. So we just got to make sure that we put it to 100 at the end because we want it to go from 0 to 100 which is going from the beginning of the spline um, to the end of the spline. So now that we've got that, what else do we need to do? Well we need to make the new splines for this. And Cinema4D has a fantastic tool for this and it's called the Tracer. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the more graph and we're going to use Tracer. Now in the tracer, it's going to ask you for the trace link. The trace link basically means what objects do you want this to trace. It can be anything that you want. Um, we're going to grab the cloner because the cloner is producing three spheres. We want to trace all three objects. So I'm going to put that in there. And if we go back to the beginning and press play, you're going to see we're going to get these three lines. Looks pretty cool, right? Now as you can see, um, the lines are a little bit jagged, which we're going to fix. Um, and also pay attention to your actual spline, your original spline. The reason for that is because this does have to be very smooth in order for you to, to get the best look um, realistically. So what we want to do is we want to press play and we want to maybe have it about here because we're looking at this curve here. It looks very jagged. So what we want to do is go into the tracer and we can go down here into the intermediate points and the type. At the minute it's set to linear, which means it's going to be direct straight lines. We want to change it to maybe Bezier, and we want the intermediate points to maybe be natural, which will give us a better result. And we want to reduce the number down to something maybe like 3. And from that, go back to the beginning and press play. You can see they look very smooth and nice. Now these are perfectly in line. Now if that's what you want, by all means use that. To change this, what you can do is go into the count. You can increase the count. So if you increase the count, you're going to get more splines. If you reduce it, you're going to get less. If you play with the Y, you can obviously get different ones, like something like this. I mean, it, this part is really down to creativity. Um, don't follow, follow a tutorial exactly, because you're never going to learn that way. The way you want to interpret to tutorials is when they say do something and then play with it, then you want to play with it. So mine had three. Maybe you want to have 12 or 9 or 8. And maybe you want them to be slightly angled, 
like so. Then let's do that. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be the same as the tutorial. Just play with it. So I'm going to reduce these down to four, and I'm going to keep the angle um, that we've got here, maybe two, and I'm going to put this up to maybe 25, something like that. There we go. Sweet. So what we want to do now is actually give this um, physical geometry, because at the minute if we just hit render, we're not going to see anything but these spheres. Um, so what we need to do is actually add some um, geometry to this, and the way you would do it would be with a sweep nerves. So first things first, we're going to turn off the spline, we're going to hold Alt down and double click these to turn them off. Same with the sphere, and we're going to leave the corner on because we don't actually see that. And this is what we're left with. So from here, what we want to do is we want to go and click on the hyper nerves object and you will find the sweep nerves. The icons kind of give you a representation of what's going to happen. It's going to take this, the circle on the end and it's going to basically sweep it across this white spline. So if you don't understand what they mean, just the icons give you a really good representation of that. So with that selected, what we want to do is grab a profile, which in, in this instance will use a rectangle. I'm going to grab the rectangle and put it in the, the sweep nerves. Then we're going to grab the tracer and put that underneath the rectangle. Now if we press play, we're going to get this, which looks completely weird. And that's because the actual well rectangle here is way too big. So we can actually adjust this on the fly and we're going to get some different results, which looks really, really cool. Um, let's reduce these down to something maybe like that. And then what we can do is we can actually go into the sweep nerves and go down here to details and in the details it will allow you to kind of taper off the end of this so if we grab the scale at the beginning here and move it down you can see the ends get thinner and thinner which looks really really cool it looks like a wisp now so if we just hit play you can see this is what we get it looks really really cool so um, because we need some highlights um, when we add some lights to this, what we want to do is the edges are pretty much 90 degrees. So what we need to do is we need to go into the rectangle and just turn on rounding. And then we want to reduce this just a tiny bit. Um, so we actually get some softer edges and this will really give us really nice highlights. Now that being said, um, it looks pretty good so far. So what we can do is, if we go into the display and turn on lines, this is what we get right now. Um, so it's given us more lines where we need it, less lines where we don't need it. So what we can do is actually reduce this. I believe we reduce or increase it. I think we reduce it. I know, I know it's one of these, I can't really remember. Um, I think it might be increasing it. I'm not quite sure. Um, oh, we, we're using the wrong one, that's why. Um, we need to go to the tracer and we need to increase this one. Just so we actually get some smoother results. I was actually changing the rectangle there, which makes no difference <clears throat> whatsoever. Um, so again, we can just put this to adaptive and leave it as is. Um, because the, the, the rectangle doesn't matter how many points it has, it's the actual trace objects that we need to smoothen out. So, that being said, this is what we have. Now, to get the look that I had where it actually started to fade off near the end, then all you need to do is go into the tracer, and we want to go from here, and we want to limit the, I believe it's the star, or not, it'd be limit the end. And we want to limit the end by maybe 10. So now if we hit play, you can see that the end basically is limited to 10 frames, which is really, really cool. We get this really nice effect. Now, if this is a bit too uniform for you, what you could do is grab the cloner and then go over to more graph effectors and use the random effector. Now what the random <clears throat> excuse me what the random effector will do is it will allow us to offset these. Now if we go back and hit play you can see now that they are offset. 
and you can offset these as much as you want um, the other problem with this is that you will have to go back to beginning and press play for it to update uh, maybe we want to bring these closer in so let's use um, 4, 4 and 4 and see what that gives us so it's not giving us as much so let's see on the, the Y let's increase this to maybe 80 something okay maybe let's actually go into the negative there we go that's pretty cool and then for the X we can increase this and for the Z we can just minus this a little bit and all we're doing right now is just playing with these trying to get um, some different results which looks pretty cool the Y is a little bit too much so let's actually reduce that a little bit there we go that looks really cool and that is pretty much what we have now you can add many different things to this effectors will all affect this because it will affect the cloner position so if you go up to more graph effectors you can add uh, a few other stuff in here like delays a formula um, you can add sound to it so music would affect it and they also have a lot of other effectors as well that will work with this um, but yeah I mean that is pretty much it in a nutshell so this is our final result which looks really really cool now again you can play with some of the settings in here I suggest um, just maybe grabbing something like um, in the sweep nerves um, banking makes quite a difference um, if you hit play it can make quite a big difference I'm not sure if it will make a difference on this one but yeah it's not actually making a difference on this which is actually quite surprising would help if I actually turned the right one on <laughs> but banking as you can see it rotates slightly and that's kind of going to give the, um, the illusion that it's following the path a lot better um, so again it's entirely up to you which ones you use um, but yeah I mean that's pretty much it and you don't have to use the rectangle you can use pretty much any shape you want let's for instance go for a star let's take that out and put the star in and then we can just reduce the star to maybe three and seven and you know you've got something like that um, your stars in your eyes <laughs> so there we go we've got something really really cool and kind of that angle actually it looks really cool because it's just coming in past the camera so maybe we can get a render of that. Maybe that's a little bit too fast. We have to be quite quick here. Nope, <laughs> it's going to be difficult. Might be easier to bake out the texture to try to get this shot, but um, yeah, maybe something like that. So you can see you can get some really good results. You can even make your own custom splines. But that is pretty much the tutorial, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you learned something from this, and if you do want the tutorial on how to like this, um, then please leave a comment about it, and if you would be so kind to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more, and I shall catch you guys in the next episode. Cheers.